Hi, this is Scott Sofkowski, and in this video we're going to be talking about the role of third parties as they are very important in our political system despite the fact that you do not see them very much represented in our government today. And here, of course, you have your learning objective straight from the college board. And so you typically, you know, are going to hear people who are disenchanted with the two-party system saying that the Democrat on the ballot is evil one, the Republican is evil two, therefore you should vote for the third party for change, the lesser of two evils. And despite the overwhelming support for third parties and for people who despise the two-party system and think that both are corrupt or both are, are bad, um, the two-party system still has a lot of support. And what's really unique about our two-party system is when you compare it to other modern democracies, such as Canada and countries in Europe, they typically have multiple political parties represented, particularly in their own parliament or Congress. In the United States, we do not see much of a multi-party system at all. Surely, we do have an independent such as Bernie Sanders, but typically you're going to have a Democrat or a Republican in Congress or as president. And again, when we're talking about the two-party system, we're talking about dominated by the Republican and Democratic parties. So when we look at third parties, sometimes referred to as minor parties, uh, it's important to note that they rarely are going to be winning elections. Now, there are four different types here of political parties. You have ones that are based on ideology, such as socialism or libertarianism. You have one that uh, was going to focus on just one particular issue that, of course, is known as a one-issue party. So think, for example, the Prohibition Party, which was seeking to make alcohol illegal and was successful for some time. There's also economic protest, such as the reform or populist parties. And then sometimes you have splinter or factional parties within a party already. A good example of this was the Tea Party, in which it sort of split a little bit from the Republican Party. They were a little bit more conservative, especially on the issue of taxation, and they sort of factioned off uh, from the Republican Party. But some of the major functions, surely, are that they are safety valves for popular discontent. So when the two parties are not doing a good job, you'll have the formation of a third political party in which you're going to bring about new group um, and new ideas into politics. The problem is, is the B example. Like a yellow jacket, when it stings you, it's going to sting uh, you in a way that it's going to hurt you. And third parties hurt the two parties because they'll bring in a new innovative approach or idea. However, just like that B, uh, it's going to die, right? Once it loses its stinger, it dies because in this case, the two parties are going to absorb that issue and thus people are going to gravitate away from that third party. So that's why you do not see third parties really making too much of an impact in terms of being represented in our politics today. And they certainly also have the spoiler effect. Um, if you look at Ralph Nader running in 2004, um, certainly not part of the Republican or Democratic parties, but sort of seeing this as a Republican win in the sense that this is going to help uh, people who don't want to vote for the, who are more Democratic but don't want to uh, necessarily vote for the Democratic candidate are going to vote perhaps for the safety valve and third party here. In the year 2000, with the whole debacle in Florida, arguably Democrats could have won the not only Florida, but the entire election had Ralph Nader not actually run in, the, uh, in terms of the Green Party. Uh, he siphoned about 97,000 votes. And again, you'll note that he's a liberal, and Al Gore is a liberal, but he siphoned off some of these votes. But keep in mind that Al Gore only lost by about 500 votes here, only 537. So arguably, had Ralph Nader not won, surely some of these, or I'm sorry, not had run, uh, surely some of these 97,000 voters would have gone to Gore, and thus he could have easily won the election. Again, that's what some people claim about the role of third parties, that they are spoilers. Now, some of the most pressing issues for third parties are, of course, the proportional system, which is used outside of the United States in those multi party countries, where multiple parties compete for office, voters are going to cast their ballots, and then the offices countrywide are going to be filled uh, proportionally. So in this case, if the conservative party got 60% of the votes, then they get 60% of the seats. If the Green Party got 5% of the vote, then they get 5% of the seats. So it's based on proportion. 
unlike the United States, which has single member districts, which it basically says the candidate who wins the most votes in that district wins that office. So even if you win uh, 51% to 49%, you win. And that person who got 49% gets no representation at all, would have to win another district, that uh, particular person's party who did not win. And again, this is part of the winner-takes-all system, and this hurts them, especially in presidential elections, where again, even if you get 49% uh, of the vote, let's say in California, and 51% goes to the Democrat, the 49% of Republicans have voted the other way, their votes really are not going to be represented in the Electoral College. And then another important issue to bring up, too, is the lack of money. People do not necessarily have faith in the third-party candidates. So with a lack of money, this also means a lack of resources as well. And some of the other barriers, again, as we talked about um, with the Electoral College, single-member districts, um, you know, some of the issues being ballot access laws. Uh, sometimes you need to show that you are a viable candidate based on state law, so you need to show that you're, you know, polling at least 5% or 10% just to get your name on the ballot. It's not um, automatic. And then you have people who believe that it's a wasted syndrome, a wasted vote, uh, that their vote really won't matter. Uh, so people just based on attitude won't vote necessarily. Tradition and history, as well as consensus, the fact that you've been doing this for so many years, or maybe your your parents were Republican or Democrat, and that's the way you've been voting as well, or just the consensus of the fact that people utilize the two-party system. Um, so there are so many barriers, both institutionally as well as one's attitude as well. It's not to say that minor parties are not represented in the United States, um, although they're really not heavily uh, involved here, but there have been some successes um, in terms of getting some electoral votes. You'll see uh, that John Bell uh, came close in 1860, but perhaps Theodore Roosevelt uh, getting the most, but still not enough to become president. Um, and you can even say that the Bull Moose Party uh, is a good, another good example of the spoiler effect because had uh, Roosevelt not won, Taft easily would have won that election for the Republicans and thus uh, preventing Wilson from gaining the presidency. So these are some of the major uh, problems that we see with third parties, um, even though they are liked in, in some regard when, people, when it comes to voting uh, for them, that becomes another issue.